So it's much you're traveling the country, you're doing the radio spots, you're playing live, you're actually getting your live chops up now. Yeah. And you've signed a deal with Virgin and the first album comes out some months later. Yeah. You know, um, what was that like once the album came out and you're actually promoting an album now? Oh, it, was a whirl- it was a continued whirlwind. We came back, um, the, whole, the whole idea of it was... Um, when we wanted to be as big as the free hugs clip was just because it was so big and we were like well how can we we don't want to be the free hugs band we want to be sick puppies so we took every gig and we we went i remember the it was the hardest run we ever did was the first run we were in a van and a trailer for three straight months and i don't think we had it i mean we might have had one day off but we just slept uh and it just it was I'll, i'll never forget it but i don't remember most of it it was uh, three gigs in the morning on on each radio station for each format. Playing if, live on the station. Playing live on the station from 6 a.m. to around 12, uh, depending on the format and the times. And then you go and you do sound check, and then you have your interviews, your your video interviews or TV or news or whatever, because you're the free hugs band. Everyone wants to talk to you. So you, and you get it all smashed in the day, and then you have a gig. And the gig takes a lot of energy. A gig is literally like, uh, I don't know, but in terms of like your actual body mechanics, you, you expend the same amount of energy in one hour that most people do in an eight hour day at work, which is fine if you're just doing the gig. If you have an eight hour day or a 12 hour day of shit to do before the gig and then you gotta do the gig, it'll wear you out mm. real quick. And then you're also, you're not eating well, you don't have any fucking money, you're not sleeping because you're in the van going to the next place. You do that for three months, you're a shell of a person by the end of it. Now this is something I want to touch on because you <coughs> told me uh, once you'd g- gained experience doing this kind of grind, mm. The record company was putting yeah. you in a position where you could mentor younger bands on how to cope with that. Yeah. How do you cope with that? Uh, discipline. Um, I was lucky because, as you know, I was raised in basically in the backstage of theatres with all the actors and they were all they talked about was craft and mm. discipline and work ethic and the show must go on and all that stuff. So that was my work ethic. And I'm not a saint. I, I, I never cancelled a show. The only times I think I cancelled three shows in my whole career because I couldn't make a sound. If I could make a sound, I'd get on stage. If it didn't work, you'd cancel it, reschedule, claim the insurance for the different piece, for the difference, and you figure it out. But for the most part, I'd play in any condition. Mm-hmm. And uh, there wasn't much sympathy for what I f- how I felt because they were like, you know, we, we have got, a commitment. We, we got a gig. Yeah. You know, you got, you got a crew, you got plane tickets, you got, and we're paying you, people you got and, two other people yeah. in the band that they can play, you know, like. So as much as it was like, well, have a, it was like, have a rest when it's scheduled, you know, <laughs> but, but it's not like, you don't get to call in sick like when you work at and a And it wasn't job. scheduled very often. No, it was never scheduled. <laughs> they, don't, they don't give a shit. They don't. And you can't like, that's the one thing that I would probably do differently when I'm in that position and I'm, you know, producing bands and, and signing acts to whatever my situation will be where I'm executive producing a situation which I'm very interested which in is doing. the next step in which your is career the next potentially step, yeah. yeah like the, the long term things like being a musician and playing live is all good stuff but I've never wanted to do just one thing the whole time well, so the that, that becomes the next step for most people once they've lived that life yeah and they become the producer but we'll come to that yeah how did you cope with it when you were the, the first you know touring uh, there was well I was young. How'd you was, keep your voice working for a start? That, it, um, that, that's, that's one of those things. The voice is the, is the hardest part. The voice was the main thing that the labels wanted. That they used to say, go on tour with Sick Puppies and they tell the lead singer, go and talk to Shim and hang out with Shim and just talk to Shim because for some reason he, he can keep going. And that was all they wanted. That's why they don't give a shit. They're not like, he's really cool. It's like, he doesn't stop working. So hang out with him and figure out what the fuck he does. <laughs> so, uh, they, you know, they, I remember the first band that came to us was this cool southern rock kind of band and they drank scotch all night and I was like you can't do that <laughs> you can do that before a day off and I'm not saying like oh you shouldn't mm. it was like you can't you you won't make it and you'll sound like shit and if you do make it you'll sound like shit and what's the point you know so uh, I basically took the guys and I, I, to, I, told, I told them like switch from scotch to vodka soda because it hydrates you while you're drinking it if you want to get smashed at least try to sort of 50-50 it you know and also, you know, maybe one shot before the gig, not 10. Uh, but they're Southern boys. You can't mm. tell them not to drink. So you just have to, you have to look at, label will say, don't do this and don't do that. It's like telling your kid, don't touch the, they're going to yeah. go and do it. So I was like, look, the, here, here are the tricks of the trade. But then the other thing was proper vocal technique. And proper vocal technique is different for every person. The same as acting technique is different for each actor because their instrument is different. Some singers don't have a lot of stamina. Some can drink scotch all day and smoke cigarettes and they sound like Jim Morrison or whatever. 
Uh, but for me, it was like the main thing that I would teach everyone, which I tell everyone every chance I get because it saved my career. Uh, my producer, Tim James, told me this when I was, uh, he, he was very, you know, some of the thing, life's funny with this stuff. You have to be listening to people when they say things because you might get that one nugget and they don't think they're telling you anything. They don't think they're giving you some piece of amazing wisdom. He just happened to be a phenomenal singer and he was like, you sound, you have a problem with this. You just focus on this thing. And he said, make sure there's not as, as little air possible going out your mouth when you sing. That's it. That's the key to everything. Because the amount of air coming past your vocal cords is the amount of stress that's being put on your vocal cords. How you sound is irrelevant. It's how much air is coming past it. And you don't need to have a lot of air going past your vocal cords to make a loud noise. You don't. You just have to control the instrument so that... The, that it's working correctly. So if you have all of this air going past it, your vocal cords are doing this and they're grinding up against each other. And if you do this with your hands for two hours, you're going to get blisters and they're going to get all fucked up, right? If you're just doing this and there's not a lot of motion, there's not a lot of energy in it, it's, it's the same type of thing. It's just a muscle. It's just these two little and guys. it's the same as acting training, vocal training, using the diaphragm. And you've done it's a bit all of that It's beforehand, all that so. stuff. The diaph yeah. Making sure it all connects. And so I would, tell, I would I'd go to these guys and I'd say, sing your songs, Sing your entire album with your hand in front of your mouth like that. You'll feel the air coming out and figure out how to sound like you want to sound with that little air coming out. And they would do that and it would change their whole set mm. because they'd also have more air to run around and be a rock star and everything. And then they wouldn't blow their voice out. And it's not a secret. It's not some like, oh, once you get in the club, we'll tell you that it's like everyone should know this. But I remember you've told me the other big issue is food. Mm. Yeah, I got, I had to cancel a gig one time because I was at risk of getting, I lost my voice and went to see a vocal doctor. I was at risk of getting a nodule. It was about to become a nodule and it was because of the acidity level in the food that I was eating was giving me a mild form of acid reflux. Uh, basically, it was because I was eating pizza after every gig because it's cheap and it's available. So I went to this doctor and he said, let me guess, you're eating pizza after every gig. I said, yeah. He said, okay, just stop doing that. <laughs> just stop doing that and you'll probably be fine. If there's still a problem, here are a few little tricks of the trade and here are you know, our tablets that you can take. I just stopped eating shit. And, um, but that, is, that acidity level, you know, and basically before every show, I would have a, a routine of, um, I would, uh, no matter what had happened in the day or what was going on, I'd have a five hour energy drink. I'd have a full serving of oatmeal with a bit of honey. And then I would have a bit of baking soda in water right before I go on because it gets all the gas out. Because if you eat too close to the show, you have a lot of gas and then you burp for the first half of your set, <laughs> right? So I would have, drink the baking soda, get the gas out, and then I'd do some running and stuff and I would be ready to go. My body was always in the same place before I'd walk on stage because I would follow that routine. But if you found it hard when you're touring to get decent food on the road? That's, that's why I ate porridge. <laughs> Serious, that's why I ate porridge. Because <clears throat> you can go to... Especially in America. Especially in America, but also you're playing clubs. There's bar food. It's deep fried this and that. It's baked potatoes with cheese on top. You could have you can have a baked potato with a bit of butter on it, and that'll do it. But even then, I just preferred oatmeal because oatmeal you, you buy it, you pop it in the in the the container above the microwave or the, the takeout cups. You make coffee, pop it in there, stir the water in, nuke it for two minutes, pop the honey in, ready to go. It's there all the time. You don't have to walk over because I literally sometimes I couldn't get my meal on time, which is, sounds very rock star, but it's just one of the things that you deal with because I couldn't walk through the club because I'm going on stage in 45 minutes and everyone's there to see me. So I can't walk through the crowd with a fucking plate of food like, yeah. yeah, excuse me. Like, and there's no other way to get in the club. Like some clubs, they just have the front door. So once you're in there, you're once stuck. you're in there, you're in and, and, they, and, they don't, they, and no one's there going to take your order and bring it out to you. It's not that sort of place. So you just go, I'll just have the porridge. So it just became a routine. It became easier. But those things, you know, that's having your routine is the discipline. Uh, and then no matter what happens, if as long it used to be like, hey, I need you know, you need a twenty four hours notice or two days notice before you do a show. At that point, I was I I turned my instrument into such a well oiled machine that someone could say, You're on in half an hour and I'd get up, I'd do my hair, I'd do da 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 da, camera ready, oatmeal, five minute run, get the cardio up, get the heart rate going, get the vocal cords ready, uh, thirteen minute um, <clears throat> exercises, thirteen minute run, and I'm ready to go at six AM because that's the job.